Tech. And we're with Dr Jordan B. Peterson, cultural phenomenon and, according to Auckland Peace Action, the biggest threat to New Zealand's way of life and civilisation that, oh, I don't know, we've seen since the last earthquake. Uh, they came out earlier this week and threw a lot of labels uh, at Dr Peterson and their spokesman, Iris, or spokesperson Iris, came on with me yesterday simply so I could ask them to, well, provide the proof of their accusations. Um, I didn't think he did that well, or they did that well, Jordan. Uh, well, it was quite the remarkable interview. I think that, uh, I don't know how many people have watched it but I, or listened to it, but I suspect quite a few, and it's no wonder because it was, it was um, a real a feat of journalistic persistence, I would say, on your part. You didn't let your your interviewee off the hook for a moment, and there was this release yesterday that got some coverage saying Jordan Peterson threatens everything of value in our society. Why? Why does telling kids to clean their room up represent the end of civilization as we know it? What I would say as such is that telling kids to clean their room is probably not a bad thing. The issue comes with that is, you know, pretty far from all that Jordan Peterson is doing. Not really. That's what his book's about. That's what he's promoting on his tour. Isn't hmm. it? I would say not. If you can, like, I mean, if you take a look at some of what's actually said in the book and many of the media comments he has made elsewhere, it seems quite quite clear that he has some seriously problematic views. Name one. Like, okay, so let's see. Let's begin with the kind of... So his interview with Camille Pallier, um, yeah. wherein he effectively has said that, said that, well, you know, he believes that in discussions with men, he knows how to, you know, he knows where he stands more or less because kind of, I guess, his honour or something is backed by the threat of physical force. And yeah, his argument is that men can put um, uh, men are better at putting barriers around social interaction between each other because there is the implicit and underlying um, reality that if things get out of control when men have a conversation, there is the possibility of physical violence. And he says that subconscious check on how far or how, if you like, bitchy a conversation can get is tempered by that knowledge. I don't see, does, does that very suggestion or idea, which I know a lot of people agree with, does that threaten Western civilization and the very foundations and everything of value in our society? Well, I'm not going to speak about, West, I won't speak about Western civilization and, you know, whether that, whether that concept even makes sense. But if you consider something like, say, I mean, consider basically how, that's going, how that kind of statement is going to be read. I think it's um, going to be read by men saying, yeah, we need to think about, you know, the differences, the biological and I guess behavioural differences between sexes. And we need to talk about these things honestly and openly if we're going to make progress on some of the issues uh, of gender in our society. All right. But on a cultural milieu where, frankly, homosexuals are still getting beaten up, we have yeah. ridiculous rates of domestic partner violence. Yeah. Frankly, in the last few months... So, so had, just, you know, just want to check, has, has yep. Jordan Peterson, to your knowledge, ever beaten his wife or beaten up a homosexual? No. Has he ever advocated people beat their wives or beat homosexuals? I don't believe he has. No, okay, so that would be a no, I, right. Can I please, um, could I please continue? Yeah. So... The fact of the matter is that Jordan Peterson has a large platform. There are many people paying attention to him. Yeah. And if you're making statements in such a situation, it is vitally important that you kind of that the statements you make cannot be misread in such a way as to promote. Which is, say, he's you know, hardly responsible for the misreading of his statements, is he? I would say that. Look, everyone's made you. You know, everyone has made kind of. If you do it once, yes. If you do it repeatedly... As do Jordan what repeatedly? Talk, make, sa make talk about things you're interested in in an open and intellectual way. That's all he does. 
Or do you think he, maybe, Iris, do you think he should be shut down? Do you think his ideas are too dangerous and he shouldn't be allowed to speak in New Zealand? I don't believe he should be shut down, hence why we're not doing that. The issue, however, is that his ideas are, is that his ideas are rather more problematic than I feel you're giving him credit for. Which ideas? Which ones specifically? That you should clean your room? That you should hold your shoulders back? That you should take responsibility for your own life? That people right, shouldn't be compelled by governments to use words, particular words in particular circumstances? Okay. The one about particular words in particular circumstances. Yes, I agree that it would be ridiculous to make the government to force, you know, effectively to use government, to use the threat of governmental force to do that. Yeah. But the way the statements are being read in the media, including by some people... Yeah, well, he can't be responsible for the stupidity of people reading his statements, can he? Again, as I'm saying, so do you think that people are not responsible for... Do you, think that, do you feel that people are never responsible for the effects of the things they say? Uh, well, yeah, I, uh, no, not particularly, but I'd also say that so, it would seem to me, from my observation of the impact that Jordan Peterson has had on people's lives, that it's been overwhelmingly positive for a huge number of people, which is why he's so incredibly popular. In... I would point out that you can say the same thing about a lot of fascist movements. They have a very positive effect on the lives of many young people. Are you men. saying that he's a fascist? No, I'm not saying that he's oh, a fascist. Okay. Good. I am saying that he is I am saying that he is exploiting a lot of the same kind of basic. How's you know, he exploiting anything? Society, he which... doesn't compel anyone to go to his talks to look at his stuff on YouTube. How's that expo- exploiting anyone? I'm not saying I mean exploiting in the terms of he is using the same cha- like he is using the same basic psychological mechanisms to build his base. Well, what base? He's just saying what he thinks and people happen to be interested. Are you suggesting he's running some campaign to destroy the Western world? Hardly. I just think, yeah, that, right. very irres- I, I just think that he is a very irresponsible man who is making... Okay. Well, let, well let's, talk about, or- let's, let's talk about responsibility, shall we, and your group, Auckland Peace Action. Um, you would like people not to go and see certain films and you're happy to physically intercede to stop them seeing certain films and, in fact, your Wellington branch bought fake bombs to create uh, terror at, in 2018 at a film festival and stop people watching a film about Ben Gurion, right? Is that right, Iris? Factually correct, so you're putting a very negative spin on it. I'm not. I'm, well, it's just fact, I was just saying some facts, mate. I mean, that's the thing, though. You, that, like, that so so what do you think is a greater threat to our society? Threatening to plant fake bombs in a movie theatre and telling people they can't go and see a movie because your group doesn't like it. Do you think that's a greater threat to our society than Jordan Peterson booking out a hall and say, pay some money and come and see me if you want? I mean, I would say that Jordan Peterson is certainly a greater threat to marginalised groups in society. I can tell you that I've got... Like, I can tell you that... What he is saying about trans people, about queer people, about women... I've never seen him very... say anything negative about women, trans people or queer people. I've never see, seen him be ho- homophobic, him transphobic or misogynistic. And I believe me, I've watched a lot of what Jordan Peterson says and does. I've never once, anywhere, seen him uh, be misogynistic, homophobic or transphobic. Can you point me to an example where he has been? Iris? What do you mean by an ex- like? What in this case do you mean by an example? What I am well, saying well, is uh, an example about- where he in any way is misogynistic, homophobic, or transphobic. So you do not feel that kind of saying. You do not feel that effectively saying that women are. You do not, so. Just to be clear, you don't feel that saying that women wear that women wear lipstick to work in order to appear sexually provocative is a is not. He's not he's saying that, and he's system. never said that. What he said, no, Iris. He it, what he said, Iris, is that. if we need to, if we accept, uh, uh, we've got to have some rules. Th- he understands the biology of men and women, and he says uh, men need to respect women's boundaries, and he is always very, very clear about that. But he says if we're going to have a desexualized workplace. If we're going to have a set of rules, let's be very clear about what those rules are. He would argue that makeup, right, that makeup is designed as a sexual display in its pure, in, you know, in an academic sense. People put on on makeup or have traditionally put on makeup as a sexual display. 
And he said, okay, if we're going to have workplaces where sex and any sort of sort of interaction of that nature between the, gen- uh, the, the genders is off the agenda, maybe we need to think about makeup in the workplace. He is not accusing women. He's not slut shaming and he's not sitting there saying women bring it on themselves. He's just saying we need to be realistic about what the rules and boundaries are. Okay, so a question for you, if you will. You're, um, so Jordan Peterson is apparently, so Jordan Peterson says things which clearly are, you know, which you clearly feel are, you know, not problematic. Well, no, millions However, of people think is not problematic and millions of people think, seem to think he's saying stuff that no one's had the balls to say for, for a while and, and, and well, they're on board with no him. To, well, saying stuff that no one's had the balls to say is really pretty passe. It's, a, it's like, frankly... Isn't it? Is That's what good. I'd say your movement um, prides itself on doing. Yes, but we aren't saying it simply to, you know, because no one else has the balls to say it. We say it because we genu- genuinely believe in our political position. And I'm sure that, that Jordan Peterson genuinely believes in his. And actually, to be honest, they seem more strip mainstream and, and less of a threat to society than buying fake bombs to scare people out of going to see a movie in New Zealand. So, just out of curiosity, how do you feel about... So what's, like, what kind of effects do you think for, say, I don't know, bombing civilians has on society... Because that's what we're fundamentally oppo- about opposing. Okay, does, does, are you saying Jordan Peterson bombs civilians? No, I'm not. What I'm saying... Then why, when we're talking about your press release about Jordan Peterson, would you bring that up? Well, why do you keep on bringing up the stuff about, uh, you know... Because it's your group that put out the press release and it's your group that bought fake bombs and said that people shouldn't go and see a movie you didn't like in a free country. Oh dear Lord. Well, let me put it this, let me put it this way, if you would. Like, if you're going to look, if you're judging us by the effect of, okay, how to phrase this, Iris, I might just be suggesting that your press release is a little bit over the top. Are you prepared to admit that on the back of this interview? No. Simply because I simply because I am living kind of on a fairly daily on a fairly regular basis with the effects that the Jordan Peterson talks are having on his you know fan base. We are getting repeated consistent harassment from rabid from frankly Jordan from Jordan Peterson fans. How do you know they're Jordan are, Peterson fans? Because they say so. So Jordan Peterson is inciting people to hate on you. Yes, he is inciting people to give hate me an example. Give me an, a, give me an example. Okay, so it's the process that. Okay, so in the wake of the press release, we're frankly we are getting frankly an awful lot of. Look, we got an email from. Look, we got an email from a mem- from frankly what appears to be a white nationalist. Yeah. Suggesting that we take a look at this, suggesting that we take a look at a whole bunch of, well, frankly, Nazi videos. Yeah, are they Jordan Peterson Nazi videos? No. No, they aren't. Ah, okay, so what's he got to do with that email from the Nazi? Well, the fact of the matter is that his fan base are the same fan base that are sending the... No, they're not. I'm part of his fan base. I'm not a Nazi. I don't... I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you are, but on the other well, hand... Well, you're suggesting anyone who is, is, does like what he says is a Nazi, no, and that seems pretty what wild. I'm suggesting, what I'm suggesting is that he has created certain, that a certain subset of his fans which may not be the same subset as you are a part of. In fact, I'm pretty sure they aren't. Yes? Yeah, okay, yeah. It's behaving in a, it's behaving in frankly, quite disgraceful way. Then it is the subset of his fans that represent the threat to everything of value in our society, not Jordan Peterson, right? Right, but you can say... So why didn't you say that in your press release and said it was Jordan Peterson who represented the threat to everything of value in our society? Because Jordan Peterson is causing for his fans to coalesce, he is encouraging. Like no, he's, he's encouraging not. He's just them, saying what he thinks. Not... All right. So just out of curiosity. All right. But where do you draw the line as to what it, like, where do you draw the line as to responsibility for what you've said, though? Yeah. I mean, surely you can't say, look, you can't say that he has absolutely no responsibility for the behavior of people who um, effectively, you know, mm. the behavior of his of people who listen to him yeah. assiduously and take... Well, I'd be, more, I'd be more worried about the consequences of buying a fake bomb to scare someone out of a movie theatre, to be honest, Iris. <sighs> oh, 
So look, and, and I, I had to start, I think most New Zealanders would as well. Look, I think we can all agree that that, uh, that, that action was foolish and that we are not, like, and as a result of that, you'll notice that we have not done that again. Hmm. Jordan Peterson, on the other hand, is only doubling down on his positions. Yeah, and he has well, a much, which all seem to be quite money, reasonable. Much, many more resources, a much wider base of support. Yeah. Are you going to cut protest his visits here and try and, and protest outside his talks? We've got any number of things, better things to be doing. Honestly, oh, okay, so, you, so you're going to somewhere. leave him alone? Or are you going to plant fake well, bombs in the, in the places he's speaking? Okay, that's just unfair. Oh, okay. Frankly. Right. Well, we've I was just it, judging you on past behaviours. I've, we've done it once. I've clearly stated that it was a bad idea and that we don't intend to repeat it. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, Iris, as Iris look, oh, yeah, okay, make a look, closing as comment. As we, look, as far as we're concerned, the best thing we can do in order to... The best thing we can do in order to counteract Peterson is to make people aware of what his views are, what he has said, and how his fan base behaves. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. And all his views are very reasonable and seem to be having a positive effect on the massive number of people who are his fans. Well, Iris, yes, you would say that. Yeah, you and, would say that. Well, because it's the truth, Iris. I thank you for your time. That's Iris.